Hi, this is uh, Vincent, continuing from my last video, which shows how Illustrator Light Paint Bucket Tool can be used to convert a line drawing created by one of my customers in Inkscape, which contained clip mask and open paths, to this drawing, which can be used for marquetry and inlay application, where the clip mask were removed and the open paths converted to clothes paths. In this video, we will round the sharp corners in the design and then create the toolpaths for cutting with a laser. We will also create a pocket and the toolpaths to carve out a wooden block for the bird to fit in. As you already know, wood veneers and shell veneers can have widely variation in colors and textures. By taking advantage of these characteristics, we can create beautiful marquetry and inlay artworks that will surpass artworks made using the traditional methods. But to achieve this, we need to scan each sheet of our veneers into JPEG images, as shown here, and use them to paint the design. Because each sheet of veneer is unique in color, texture, and grain pattern, therefore, each sheet must individually be scanned. I have many natural wood veneers, all sorted and stored in these moisture-proof containers all labeled and scanned into JPEG images. You can see most of these in the standard material database that come with Image Paint. Those veneer images can be seen in the laser panel or the G-code panel. We can use these wood veneers to paint the bird before cutting the veneers. In the later video, I will show you how to create your own material database with your own veneer images that you can use in your inlay projects. The next thing we need to do is to round the sharp corners to the laser curve. You probably are thinking, since the laser beam is so small, why do we need to round the sharp corners? Sure, it is small, but not small enough to ignore. And yes, we can get away without rounding the sharp corners for this design, but in order to achieve the best possible fit, we should do it. But before that, let's open the Verify panel check for any tiny paths that may have been created by various illustrator tools that we used before getting to this point. As seen here, there are no tiny paths reported, but if there were, we can click this checkbox to select them and then hit the delete key to delete them. Once the design is clean, we can round the sharp corners. By selecting these paths, any sharp corners in the design will be rounded to this laser curve value. The software warns that there is one glitch in the design, but let's continue by clicking yes. Image Paint deleted that glitch and the corners were rounded successfully. When we select the design, we can see there are many points in a path. Lasers can process these paths quickly, but if we were to cut them with a CNC router, or we need to make changes to the paths later on, it is best to reduce the number of points in a path while keeping the shape unchanged. This is done with Object Path Simplify function. Set Simplify Curve value to a maximum will prevent the shape from being oversimplified. This is the number of points in the original design, and this is how many points after the paths are simplified. Here I'm trimming the background and resize the artboard to match the size of the design. Before we bring our wood images into this panel, we need to specify where they are. All my wood images are in a folder called Wood Inventory. This folder is called the Image Folder. So by selecting Add All Images from Image Folder, Image Paint will add each veneer image from each wood species to this image panel. To apply an image to a path, select it, then click on an image swatch.
Let's find a photograph of this bird and use it as a reference. Hold down the shift key, click and drag to resize the image. When moving the clipper paths, it's always a good idea to turn off the bounding box to prevent accidental resizing of the clipper paths. Notice when we select the master path and apply an image to it. The master paths are deselected and the clipper paths are now selected. But the master paths are still highlighted to indicate that the clipper paths are selected. But as soon as we move the clipper paths, the master paths are no longer highlighted to keep the design clean, making it easier to see. Using Image Finder, we can split this piece into two pieces. When working with paths that already have images applied, we have to use Image Finder, which is included in Image Paint. We cannot use Illustrator Pathfinder tool to do it. There is no function Pathfinder can do that Image Finder cannot do. So we can ignore Pathfinder altogether in our design. That is the Image Picker tool, which comes with Image Paint. It works like this eyedropper tool, but instead of sampling regular color, it samples an image. In this case, it is very useful since we want to use the same wood veneer as this path.
Again, the image finder tool is used to split this path into two. Notice the software also split the corresponding clipper path into two. In fact, every function in the image finder tool will modify both the master paths and the clipper paths. Without image finder, we have to remove the image from each path first before using Illustrator Pathfinder tool, and then reapply the images after a Pathfinder operation. The bird's tail consists of three shapes, but since I chose a good location on the clipper image, I can merge them together into one piece. Sometimes the merge function produces extra path, so we just delete the extra paths, delete the corresponding clipper paths, and then reapply the image to the master path. We can perform the same operations on these paths. As a result, we end up with less pieces to cut, and the design looks better too. Now that the design is completed, we can create the cutter paths and send them to the laser to cut. But first, we need to create another artboard with its size matching the laser bed. When creating this artboard, make sure that the left side of the artboard is a little to the right of the design, so that the clipper image does not overlap the artboard. When resizing this artboard, select this corner to lock it at that location. To create the cutter paths for the laser, select a master path that has the image of the veneer we want to cut. Be sure the job is set to profiling. Specify the XY origin of your laser here. For most CO2 laser, the curve width is around 0.003 inches. Image Paint will use this value to enlarge the cutter paths to account for the amount of material the laser removes when it cuts. Yes, Artboard 1 is not the laser bed. Let's select Artboard 7. Checking the mirror cutter's checkbox instructs Image Paint to flip the cutter paths to the other side, effectively hiding the burnt edges caused by the laser. This means that the laser will end up cutting on the negative side of the veneer. When we start putting the pieces together, we flip them back to the positive side. Repeating the same procedure to create the cutter paths for the other veneer sheets.
Once we are done with creating the cutter paths for all linear sheets, we are ready to send them to the laser for cutting. Notice when we select a master path, the corresponding clipper paths, clipper images, cutter paths, and the cutter image become visible. To prevent the laser from seeing the cutter image, we can hide it with this button. If you have an epilogue laser, you can print the cutter paths directly to it, as seen here. Looking at the laser panel, we can see the suggested power, speed, and frequency settings to cut this sheet of veneer. I'm repeating the same procedure to send the cutters to the laser. We all know that each species of veneer requires different laser power and speed setting. Sure, you can be lazy and set the power to high in order to cut through all types of veneers. But that will make the final size of the cut smaller than intended. That is why on the laser panel, each species has its own set of laser power and speed required to just cut through the material. It is important to note that the speed and power settings are for a 35 watt laser. If your laser wattage rating is different, you need to consult the tutorial document available on my website, which shows you how to quickly convert those power speed settings appropriate for your laser. Of course, these settings can be changed further to compensate for the aging effect of the laser tube. Information on how to do that is also in the tutorial document I mentioned earlier. Since not all lasers support printing from within Illustrator, you can export the cutter paths to either SVG or DXF file and use it in your laser software. Let's export these cutter paths to an HVG file. We click here to open the folder that has the HVG file we just created. The SVG file contains the cutter paths, but also contain a rectangle equal to the size of the veneer sheet. Therefore, the location of the cutter paths relative to the veneer sheet is preserved. When placing the material on the laser bed, align it to where the rectangle is, and the cutter paths will cut exactly where we had designed it in image paint. And since all the paths are grouped, make sure we ungroup them first and then delete the rectangle before sending the cutter paths to the laser. It's time to create the pocket for the pieces to fit in. We locked the master paths before, so we need to unlock it before we can copy and paste it.
To remove the image, we use Release Clipping Mask, and then delete the image. Let's undo. An easier way to do this is to click this button on the image panel. To get the background by itself, use Release Clipping Mask. Now we have two paths. We can use the rectangle as a pocket. In this case, the whole design will fit into it. Or we can omit the background veneer and create this pocket where only the bird will fit inside it. To create a pocket, select Pocketing. Set the laser curve value to negative 0.003 inches. This will produce a cutter path that is that much smaller in order to compensate for the extra material the laser will remove. Now, click this button to start. Artboard 7 now contains the cutter paths for the pocket. If we zoom in, there is a solid rectangle inside four unfilled rectangles. The outermost rectangle is the guide path that represents Artboard 10 to be used for material alignment only and will not be sent to the laser, so we don't need to delete it. The solid blue rectangle is seen by the laser as a raster path. That is, it will move the laser back and forth to carve out the pocket. This back and forth movements of the laser will cause the left and right side of the rectangle to burn more than the top and the bottom sides. So, the final size of the pocket will be slightly longer than it should be. This is why Image Paint created three more outer cutter paths to mask out that rastering issue, so that in the end, the result is more accurate than if only a raster path is used. The power, speed, and frequency settings for the pockets depends on your laser. The depth of the pocket should be equal to or a few thousandths of an inch deeper than the thickness of the veneer. Again, you can export the cutter paths to an SVG or DXF file if your laser does not print directly from inside Illustrator. If we want to use a wooden block as the background, then we only need to create a pocket for just the bird. Again, the three cutter paths are also present in this pocket. There is an option that tells the software to omit these three extra cutter paths and create just the solid raster path. Let's delete these. Select this option and create the pocket again. This time, the three cutter paths have been removed and the solid path is now larger than before to compensate for the omitted cutter paths. Some users prefer to create the pocket with a CNC router. In the later video, I will cover everything you need to know how to cut the veneers and create the pocket using a CNC router. Now, after all the veneers are cut, the images that represent them are no longer valid. We need to update those images to contain the cutout area so that when we reuse those veneers for another project, or even the same project. We know where the cutout areas are and be able to avoid them. The procedure is very simple. Select a master path to review the cutter image. And then click on this button. 
Repeat the same procedure for all other images. The original images are still the same and will not be replaced until we save the document and reopen it. The updated images are temporarily stored in this folder. After the file is reopened, all original images will be replaced with the updated images. That is why the design is now all black. I forgot to create the cutter paths for these shapes. Now we can save, close, and reopen the file. Assume that we want to cut another bird. Just move the clipper paths to an unused area on the clipper image. The older cutter paths and images will need to be deleted, and the new cutter paths need to be recreated. To come up with this dragon design, I scan a drawing from the Great Book of Dragon Patterns by Laura Smith and use Illustrator Image Trace to convert it into vector shapes. What you see here have not been cut yet. Maybe in the near future I will have a video showing exactly how I end up with these images, including detailed instruction on how to use Image Paint to create G-code files for cutting with a CNC router. Until next time, thanks for watching.